Well, what a great time to have Don Vialo join me. He's with timingthemarket.ca, but why? In case you're not familiar with his work, he has this whole approach that's first with cycles and then seasonality. And for example, we're in a season right now. We're in the presidential election season. That's the overlay. And then we can talk, we'll drill down into what happens in the particular months, the summer, uh, individual stocks. Don does timingthemarket.ca. Uh, Don Vialo, thanks for taking time with me. Thanks for inviting me, Mike. Well, Don, let's let, let's start with uh, the presidential cycle. I mean, obviously, it's on people's minds. You know, the big debate on Thursday and all the talk about it since. So, you know, is there sort of a, a trend that we can sort of start with? It's not the definitive, but it says what are the sort of uh, kind of tendencies when you get into the year of an election? Well, historically, during uh, an election year for the president, the markets move significantly higher from approximately the last week in June, right through until about the middle of August. And that has worked out uh, on average return of about two and a half percent per year. So a uh, pretty good chance that we'll see something like that again. Uh, that fits in with the regular seasonal cycle where 15 of the last uh, 20 uh, periods for the month of July, the S&P 500 has moved up significantly. So you look at those two things, and all we're trying to do is put the probability of, you know, making money in our corner, you know, as you say. So you add up both of those and, you know, puts puts a check mark by the list, uh, you know, there. Let, let's talk a little bit further about the summer and the summer movement. I mean, there's that famous uh, saying that says, uh, you know, sell in May and don't come back till Labor Day, you know. <laughs> so that's another one of those sayings that has a, a lot of validity in sort of history. That's true, but remember, uh, this cycle happens every four years for the mm. cycle, and there are certain sectors which tend to do very well during this uh, period in March, or I mean, uh, in July. A good example, uh, uh, something else happens during uh, presidential election years, and that's the Olympic Games. It happens every, Olymp uh, every presidential election year. And historically, there are certain sectors that do very well in the summertime in the U.S. presidential election year, most notably the consumer or the communication services companies, uh, companies like Meta and uh, Comcast and companies like that. Their stocks normally do very, very well in the month of July. That's fascinating. I hadn't even thought of, of course, as soon as you say it, I know the correlation or the relationship. I mean, yeah, the Olympic Games, the summer games coming up, uh, you know, in July in Paris, of course. But you sort of go, oh, yeah, that's every that happens every election, you know, year. So uh, interesting to see there's a pattern that develops out of that, or at least there's some correlationships there. The key is uh, we see the correlations. But the reasons for it happening are usually fundamental reasons. Mm -hmm. The question is, will be well, are the fundamentals there this year to cause U.S. and Canadian equity markets to move higher into the month of July? And the answer is yes, there is. Oh, well, as you say, I mean, in this case with the Olympics, I mean, it's got to help the travel season, that's for sure. And communications, you say, the people who are broadcasting now, of course, expanded to social media. That's got to be big time in that. So, yeah, kind of interesting the way that relates. And, and as I say, it fits your seasonality pattern, though, too, when we look at that. That's correct. The key this year is earnings coming from major Canadian and U.S. companies. Mm -hmm. Yet the uh, earnings for the S&P 500 companies look for a big surge in earnings gains coming into the second quarter. Of course, those results will be reported sometime in the month of July. On average, earnings are in the second quarter where the S&P 500 companies are expected to increase by about 8.8%. That's versus only 5.9% in the first quarter. So we have an acceleration in earnings gains coming our way. Uh, let me let me move to the TSX for a second here. Uh, you know, is it sort of a similar kind of positive seasonality? It does, and it's and uh, this year in particular, it looks uh, particularly promising in certain sectors in the Canadian market, most notably in the, the uh, natural resource sector. If you look at the natural resource companies, uh, would it be in gold or base metals or energy? All of them are expected to report significantly higher earnings coming into the second quarter. Uh, earnings, for example, for the energy sector, you're expected to be up about 16%. Uh, earnings in the uh, base metal sector, you're expected to be up 20%. 
Earnings in the uh, gold and silver areas are even going to be better. For example, silver producers' earnings are expected to be up about 29% on a year-over-year -year basis. And added to that is currency. The Canadian dollar has been significantly weaker than the U.S. dollar over the past year. In fact, the U.S. dollar relative to the Canadian dollar is up an extra 8%. Now, you translate that into uh, the earnings of these natural resource companies, and you see some significant earnings increases coming into the second quarter. So you've got, of course, if you're operating in Canada, your costs are down versus the U.S., but of course, commodity prices are measured in U.S. dollars too, so that's not a bad formula for making a little bit more money. Uh, sure, but it's, it is interesting, like, like music to my ears when you start talking commodities and oil, because I, I'm very comfortable with you know, the demand long term. You know, We're talking shorter term here, but demand long term is going to be there as purchasing power continues to erode in, in, the, in all the paper currencies. So, so yeah, I got a little smile on my face when you say that. Yeah, it's getting lined up quite nicely. Um, but even today, we had some encouraging news from the states, which will help both Canadian and U.S. stocks. And that's the uh, PC price index that came mm -hmm. out of the U.S. Now, his, uh, historically, if, if it's heading higher, that's bad for equities. But when they're trending lower, that is very, very positive for equities because it sets the scene up for the Federal Reserve to consider reducing interest rates coming into the second half of this year. We saw the PCE price index on a core basis uh, drop to 2.6%. That is setting the stage up for the Federal Reserve to reduce their Fed fund rate probably by September of this year. Wow, and that, that's interesting. Of course, that's a really hot debate because uh, will the Federal Reserve keep an eye on the federal election and maybe not want to be seen as influencing it either way, I guess, <laughs> you know, but I mean, that, and that's back to that presidential cycle in terms of, you know, the attention that pays in the market, like the uncertainty coming out of that debate is it's going to be Donald Trump, but versus who, you know, so, uh, you know, that adds to it too. I mean, it's, I guess it's the, I don't know if it's recency bias on my part, but it seems like, you know, that old uh, sign on the stock exchange in New York, gosh, when I was there 30 and 40 years ago was now is always the most difficult time to invest, but it seems like balancing. And that's why I like things like to see what you are sort of traditionally, historically has the, the pattern been in your favor if you do X or Y, you know, then you drill down, of course, with timingthemarket.ca and I'll tell people that's absolutely you know, free, just put in timingthemarket.ca, uh, you know, your commentary on a daily basis there, different markets, different specifics in there. When, when you're looking right now in the market, can I, I get you to reiterate to some degree though. So which sectors would I be focusing on uh, if I want to get long here as we enter this positive se uh, season in July? In the case of the US, look at the communications uh, services sector. Uh, the easy way of doing that is uh, there's an ETF, the symbol is XLC. In the case of Canada, look at the natural resource companies in general, because mm -hmm. they're all going to show some very, very strong second quarter results over the next month or two. Okay, so this is really crystal ball time on this way. But again, it's hard not to be thinking the presidential election because we've got the primary, not the primaries, pardon me. We have the conventions coming up. They're going to be part of this session. Obviously, the vote. What, again... Where are the probabilities for after the election? What's the first year of a new presidential cycle look like generally? Historically, in the first year after the president is elected, you see equity markets in the U.S. go significantly higher because by then the president, whoever he who happens to be, will set up his agenda and will start doing the things that he thinks are going to help the economy. And that's a good sign, sign for equity security prices going forward. Yeah. Well, as I say, I, I, I'm not going to, well, I will hold you to that as the general, because that's what's happened in the past, but we'll visit with you again before that, <laughs> you know, to get an update from you. So in, in parting, Don, uh, you're positive on the uh, equity outlook. You know, this is the time to sort of get interested. Do we get nervous again in the fall? Historically, um, markets during the presidential election year do well in the month of July, right through until the middle of August. Then they go into a corrective phase uh, prior to the actual election itself. Mm -hmm. When you get into October, and from the beginning of October right through until the end of the year, equity prices in the U.S. in particular go significantly higher. 
Well, that's a great roadmap, but people don't have to wait to visit with you again. They can go to timingthemarket.ca. Don Vialo, thanks for finding time. Thank you, Michael.